Hi, everybody, and welcome to this edition of the MCHD Paramedic Podcast 360. Today's episode is on STEMI mimics and, and is kind of a follow up to our uh, previous cast where we did EKG basics and the diagnosis of STEMI. Today, again, I have our cardiac specialist, Brad Ward, with us. Hello. Uh, so, Brad, let's get started with STEMI mimics. Talk about the four main STEMI mimics we see most often. Yeah, we're not going to go into every STEMI mimic that exists out there and the winters, T waves, and all that stuff. So, we're going to stick with the four big ones. We're going to stick with benign early repolarization, a left bundle branch block or paced rhythm, the left ventricular hypertrophy, and pericarditis. So, benign early repolarization. This is a disease where you really have to look at both the EKG, really everyone, you have to look at, it's the EKG and the assessment of the patient. Uh, this is a disease of younger people. You will see diffuse ST elevation. Uh, you may see prominent J point notching, which is the, the little takeoff point at the end of the QRS segment. And remember, it's happy appearing concave STT wave changes, and you will not see reciprocal changes in this patient. So Brad, let's take a look at an EKG here. All right. Looks like we have ST elevation in arguably lead one, but definitely lead two, lead three, AVF, not really AVL, but uh, pretty much all through the precordial leads. So I'm gonna give you two clinical scenarios and you give me a diagnosis for each one of those. Okay. First one is a 22 year old with three days of cough, shortness of breath, and he's had some subjective fevers at home. He's having some predict chest pain, you get this EKG. What's your most likely diagnosis? Is that he has pericarditis or benign early repol. Okay, next one, same EKG, 60 year old, crushing substernal chest pain for an hour. Patient's a diabetic, a smoker with previous PCI. I am activating that as a STEMI. Absolutely, so the take home point here is there are some things that can tip you off to a more benign appearing ST elevation i.e. It's, it's concave appearing STT wave segments, happy, happy looking, smiley face. You don't see reciprocal change and it's in a non-worrisome patient that we want to go over as left bundle branch block. So instead of going into the Scarbosa criteria, all these criteria that allow you to read a STEMI with, that lives within a left bundle branch block pattern, we're going to focus on what a normal appearing left bundle branch pattern looks like. Um, so there's four criteria. So they are, the QRS has to be greater than 120. You have to have a positive QRS deflection in V6 and a negative QRS deflection in V1. There's ST elevation present kind of everywhere, but it's the concave happy sort of ST elevation. And then the ST segment has to be the opposite of the major QRS deflection. And here's a here's a picture's worth a thousand words of discordance. So here you see the STT wave complex that is discordant or in the opposite direction than the main QRS deflection. So let's have a look at this EKG, Brad. Does it fit the rules? Number one, QRS greater than 120, yep. check. Positive in V6, negative in V1, yep. check. STT wave complexes with ST elevation, mm, yep, but it's happier, unhappy looking. It's happier than happier, unhappier. but not yeah. as happy as I would like Mostly to say. a check. Mostly a check. And discordance of the STT wave complex in the QRS. Yes. All right, so your diagnosis? Left bundle branch block. Normal appearing left bundle branch block, I would agree. Brad, tell us about LVH. We get LVH when your heart has to pump against a high blood pressure over long periods of time. Right, and it's, it's represented graphically by ch EKG changes, right? A bigger amplitude of the EKG, which should make sense to us. Now, there's two ways to read left ventricular hypertrophy. There's the easy way and the not so easy way. Brad is going to tell us about the not so easy way. Brad is not going to tell you about the not so easy way because Brad doesn't do this way. Okay, let's move on to the easy way. So you can look at these formulas and, and do the math on each one of these EKGs. Very, very good way to do it. Or you can simply have a look at the EKG. And whenever you see the QRS waves have such high amplitude that they're kissing. So kissing QRSs in the precordial leads, you have LVH. Okay, so LVH, so you have kissing leads and the precordial leads, check. 
Check. You have ST elevation, but is it happy appearing ST elevation? Relatively. Yeah, relatively happy. And then you have the usual appearing STT wave changes laterally, or kind of the scoop changes laterally. So your diagnosis, Brad? Be normal appearing LVH. I would agree. Normal appearing LVH. So next, let's move on to pericarditis. So pericarditis is kind of a disease, that, just like benign early repo, I think. You have to fit the EKG findings with the proper clinical picture. So what do we see EKG-wise? We see classically diffuse uh, ST elevations. Uh, they're usually happy appearing. Uh, and you may see, if you're lucky, PR depressions. Um, it could be positional. It's thought to, it's inflammation of the pericardium, so it's thought to be uh, they may have a viral prodrome or an illness. It's worse when you're lying flat, better when you're sitting up, very pleuritic in nature. So let's have a look at this EKG. Brad, you want to interpret that for us? Sure. So we have what appears to be a sinus rhythm, maybe a little sinus tack, um, with depression, PR depression globally, but especially in uh, lead two and the precordial leads. Then we have ST elevation, also pretty globally, but with the concave happy appearance. Okay, so I'm gonna give you a clinical, two clinical scenarios. Okay. You give me a diagnosis. So the first is a 60-year-old uh, with crushing substernal chest pain. He's diabetic, a smoker. He's had his onset of symptoms were abrupt about an hour ago. I am activating that as a STEMI. Absolutely, couldn't agree more. Next would be a 22-year-old, uh, viral illness for last couple of days. He's got pleuritic cough and chest pain. Get the EKG. That's pericarditis. Right. So remember, it's always the, the decision to activation is twofold. It's the EKG findings and the assessment, the clinical picture. Yep. So let's wrap it up, Brad. What are some take-home points you would you would take from this talk? The main the main points you think are most important. I would say repeat, repeat, repeat. Get as many EKGs as are clinically necessary. The best picture you can take is multiple pictures. Right, right. Remember, an EKG is just one snapshot in time, and I couldn't agree more, Brad. The more, the better. Remember, this is a dynamic process. Um, benign early repo is the disease that you know you have to have the EKG findings in the proper clinical picture. Right, it's typically younger patients. It's not typical anginal type chest pain. Um, left bundle branch block and LVH are tough guys, but learn the patterns of a normal left bundle and a normal LVH. That'll really, really help you pick up the ones that are abnormal. Don't focus so much on uh, all these different scoring systems to call a STEMI within one, but understand what a normal one looks like. And then remember that it's always the clinical picture plus the EKG, nothing stands alone. All right. That about wraps it up for this version of MCHD Paramedic Podcast 360. Brad, thanks for joining me today. Thanks for having me. And as always, you can send us your comments and questions, ideas for cash you'd like to see uh, to our podcast email, podcast at mchd-tx.org. Thanks for watching, and we'll talk to you soon. Bye.